or is it covalent? Does this compound contain a metal? If it's yes, it's ionic. If it's no, it's covalent. So carbon and oxygen are both nonmetals. So this is covalent. How about this one? Ionic or covalent? So show the formation using Lewis structures. So just the product means just the Lewis structure. Lithium fluoride. Lithium has one valence electron. Fluorine has seven. Do you remember how to use your periodic table to tell you? Show. It's going to go there. Lithium now has lost one electron because it's lost one. It's positive. Fluorine gained one, so it has eight. Because it gained one, it's negative. One, one negative. Okay? For the product, when I say show the, show the Lewis structure for magnesium oxide, I'm just asking for the right-hand side. So what I'm expecting is just Mg, 2 plus oxygen, 2 minus. That should be an H in the middle. Okay, so the electrons fall equally between the two. So this hydrogen is now surrounded by two, and this hydrogen is now surrounded by two. That is a covalent bond. going to share. It has a valency of one, right? A combining capacity of one. What's the combining capacity of oxygen? How many bonds will every oxygen want to make? Correct. Two. Got a combining capacity of two. It's two squares away from being a noble gas. So, in this case, it will share two electrons so that both oxygen atoms gain two electrons. So for oxygen, got your inner electrons. So now it's going to share two electrons with the neighboring oxygen so that both of them are surrounded by eight electrons. This is so inconvenient and so laborious to draw, so we're going to show 
we're going to go through this and figure out how to do it. The pull on a pair of electrons shared between two atoms. So, there's a space underneath there. You're going to draw a line. This is what we call the bonding continuum. This is how we tell whether or not a bond is polar or nonpolar or extremely polar. So you're going to mark off 0 0.5 and 1.7. Differences or the change in electronegativity. So this is a calculation. Two atoms are bonded, so we take the electronegativity of the highest and we subtract from it the other electronegativity from the other atom, and we see where it falls in the bonding continuum to decide whether or not if that bond is polar or not. So if the difference is zero, they are pure covalent. pure covalent at zero. That means there's complete equal sharing of the charge. They have the same pull. An example of this would be any diatomic element because their electronegativities are the same. So find oxygen. On your yellow periodic table, I've given you the electronegativity values. They're on the right-hand side. What's the electronegativity value for oxygen? Christian? 3.5. So if oxygen is bonded to oxygen, 3.5 minus 3.5 is 0. How about hydrogen? What's the value for hydrogen? 2.1. 2.1 minus 2.1 for hydrogen two hydrogen bonded together, the difference is zero. So, pure covalent bonding. If you are between 0.1 and 0.4, you are non-polar. you are nonpolar covalent. That means you've pretty much got equal sharing even though it's not zero. There's not a big, big enough pull to register. So you're nonpolar covalent. If you are between 0.5 and 1.7, you are polar. So if you are, if your difference in electronegativity is between 0.5 and 1.7, you're considered <coughs> polar covalent bond. If you are greater than 1.7, this is called ionic characteristics, but it doesn't mean it's ionic. Ionic characteristics, which means if you're two nonmetals, you're extremely polar. Okay? Some of your ionic compounds will actually be less than 1.7, some will be higher. So basically, to determine if something's ionic, you still need to look at the two elements that are bonded together. 
So if it's a metal, it's ionic, no matter what. Okay. So I want you to tell me what the difference in electronegativity is between an oxygen and a hydrogen. This time, your chlorines are not going to give up or take electrons. They're going to share. So the unpaired electron will join up and become paired. And we call this pair a bonding pair. Pair, of course, means two. So each chlorine atom will have three pairs of lone electron and one bonding pair. So these are your pairs of lone electron. And then you've got a bonding pair. Electrons will always be in twos, in pairs. But even drawing this out can get a bit tedious. So we can draw the bonding pair as a line. You still have to show the other valence electrons but you can replace the bonding pair with a line that represents a bond containing two electrons. So this is a Lewis structure. For Cl2, we can also draw just the structural diagram which shows no lone pairs of electrons, but it shows how the bonds are, um, are occupied between the two of them. So if you are asked to draw a structural diagram, you are only going to show the bonds. So a structural di diagram shows the bonds and the bonds only. A Lewis structure will show lone pairs of electrons as well. And the name, of course, is just hydrogen gas. Oxygen. What did we say was the combining capacity of oxygen? Two. So it has two bonds between it. It has two bonds between it. How many electrons are in each bond? Two. So how many electrons did you just draw? Four. How many does oxygen want around it altogether? Eight. So we're missing four electrons on each oxygen. Again, you could do just the dots if you want. Gets a little messy. Structural formula, just the atoms and the double bond. And this is oxygen gas. A nitrogen atom, how many electrons would it have around it? One nitrogen <coughs> atom. Five. Here's your five. One, two, three, or five. So I'm not making it have more electrons. I just place them where they need to be to bond. 
So then this nitrogen, same thing, three. That makes those three available to bond to that other nitrogen atom. So now, structural diagram. And this is nitrogen gas. How many bonds are between the hydrogens? Kyle? One. So we call one bond between two atoms a single bond. There's two bonds between oxygen, so we call that a double bond. This is only when it's between the same two atoms. A nitrogen then would have, a, it's got a triple bond, yeah. So if you have three bonds between the same two atoms, you've got a triple bond. Takes less time to show the sticks. Okay, so there's your two Lewis structures. Structural formula just shows the bonds and the atoms. The name of this, you might know its common name. The common name is methane. But the IUPAC name, carbon tetrahydride. Methane is produced uh, at city dumps when you have waste decomposing underground without oxygen. You'll see pipes coming out of the ground. Because it's a bit overcast today, you might actually see them burning off excess methane. If you didn't burn it off, right, if you didn't vent it out, you'd have an explosion. Your pile of garbage would become a volcano because of the buildup of the pressure from the gas. So often, um, I know the one down by Walker's, the old one, you used to have a pipe coming out of the ground, you see a blue flame on a day like this. And